When people get interested in a chameleon, they don't realize what an incredible journey they are embarking on. Through this video channel, we will be exploring this small corner of the natural world that will expose us to biology, nutrition, geography, weather, and a wide array of the sciences. But it all starts with simply being interested in a chameleon as a pet. So that is where we will start. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to what a chameleon is like and what it needs to be healthy. The purpose is to make sure that your expectations and what a chameleon actually is will overlap as perfectly as possible before you bring one into your life. Welcome to the Chameleon Academy. Hello and welcome. Let's start off by me introducing myself. My name is Bill Strand, and I got my first chameleon a little over 40 years ago, and I've been studying and working with chameleons ever since. I've scoured the globe, interviewing the world's top keepers, breeders, scientists, and veterinarians, and it is here that I am bringing all of that research and experience to share with you. Chameleons are nothing short of amazing. They have a unique blend of characteristics that make them stand out in the animal world. But they have a life that is much different than ours. Just like any animal that has not been domesticated for thousands of years, chameleons have not been designed for us. So our attitude must be to align our expectations to what they are. It's really not what we want to hear. Believe me, I wish I could tell you that a chameleon could turn into a great shoulder pet, but that's just not realistic. And uh, the best use that I can put my 40 years of experience to is to relate to you what a chameleon truly is. So let's get to it. Chameleons spend their life looking for things to eat and avoid being eaten themselves. When you walk by a chameleon's cage and you see them swivel around the branch, they are hiding. When you see them walking in a jerking manner, they're trying to hide their movement by looking like a leaf swaying in the wind. All of this is because their defense against predators is to not be seen. This is important because we need to understand that a chameleon most often sees us as something that could eat them. That is why we see them defensive. And that makes sense. For millions of years, assuming that animals bigger than them might eat them has worked fabulously to keep them alive longer. This idea of being a pet is completely foreign to them, and their brains have no idea what to do with it. The good news is that chameleons are intelligent enough to get used to the idea of you being around, especially if they are captive hatched and you are constantly bringing them food. Sometimes it's surprising how quickly they start looking forward to you showing up. So what kind of relationship can you have with a chameleon? Well, every chameleon is going to have a different personality, so we cannot predict what yours will turn out to be. The species how you care for them, and how young you receive them will all affect how they grow up. The most realistic expectation of keeping a chameleon as a pet is that you are creating a slice of nature in your living room. The enclosure is brimming with plant life, and occasionally, a mini tree dragon appears and slinks around to warm itself and hunt for food before fading back into its leafy retreat. You are the creator of this world and responsible for maintaining it. In return, you're able to observe your cage environment and your chameleon growing. And that is the ideal chameleon keeping scenario. Now, I know this may be a disappointment and perhaps a turnoff for many people. And their first response may not be to realign their expectations, but to just find somebody who's going to tell them what they want to hear. If this is you, I ask that you give me a little bit more time. A uh, little bit more time to explain how learning about chameleon nature and respecting what they are can actually lead to greater long-term fulfillment. At least give me to the end of this video to make my case and share with you this incredible world that I have found. So if chameleon keepers don't play or handle their chameleons, uh, what do they do? Well, mostly we enjoy watching them. We put great effort into creating a beautiful cage environment that is full of life. The plants grow as your chameleon grows, and it soon turns from something you created to something you are watching be created before your eyes. It's a peaceful, calming activity. 
Now, this doesn't mean that there is no interaction. Your chameleon will actually become comfortable with you. Chameleons can tell the difference between people and they will recognize you as the person that brings them their food. Most chameleons will get comfortable enough with you that they will eat out of your hand. And this is the level of interaction I choose to have with some of the more calm of my chameleons. And some people, like me, take it a step further. Uh, chameleons are a puzzle to us. We obsess about creating the absolute best environment so our chameleons can live the longest, healthiest life. Uh, herpeticulture is the study of the captive care and breeding of reptiles and amphibians. It's a discipline like any other, and it's my lifelong pursuit. Now, you may be saying that that all sounds wonderful, but you really aren't ready to learn the secrets of being a wizard of chameleonology just yet you would just like to have a cool chameleon. Of course, you can have a great experience with a chameleon without going so deep if you just accept certain aspects of chameleon keeping. So I'll go over some high-level basics that can help you decide whether you're right for a chameleon. These are some of the most commonly asked questions that I get from beginners. The number one question is always, can I hold my chameleon? If you're looking for a simple black and white answer, the answer is no. Don't hold your chameleons. Chameleons are not holding pets. But one look on social media and even watching this video, you're going to see people with chameleons on their hands. You're going to see me with chameleons on my hands. So on one hand, we've got this chameleons. If you hold them, they will stress and they will die. And on the other hand, you see chameleons that seem to be doing just fine sitting on people's hands. Okay. I'm going to lay it out and explain the situation. So we're going to take all of those statements, which are mostly true, and we're going to explain how they make sense. First of all, chameleons die from stress. True. Stress weakens the immune system in chameleons, just like it does for us humans. They can die from an illness that is allowed to explode because the weakened immune system cannot fight it off. The dangerous type of stress is not the stress spikes, where the stress happens once and then goes away relatively quickly. This can be taking your chameleon out to give it a visual exam, a trip to the vet, or to show your very quiet friend your new mini tree dragon. The deadly stress is chronic stress, such as environmental conditions outside the ideal, too hot, too dry. It could be two chameleons kept in the same cage or holding your chameleon beyond their limit. Two, handling causes stress. True. Each chameleon will have a different level of stress from handling, from a completely high level freaking out stress to a totally non-existent level of calmness for certain individuals. Three, handling therefore causes death. Only partially true. Short, calm handling sessions, like a wellness check, vet visit, or photo session, are well within the definition of a stress spike, where a condition will appear and then quickly disappear. Chameleons are designed to weather these. Handling can become a dangerous situation, though, if it is extended long-term or if playing with them is involved. And if you want an actionable answer, it's as simple as this. Unless there's a reason that you have to take them out, don't take them out unless they come out on their own. In this way, the chameleon is in complete control over what he or she is doing. And four, so how come these chameleons aren't dead? Right. All right, so we explained. All handling is not the same and all stress is not the same. You just need to be smart about how you interact with your chameleon. The safest thing to do is not to handle them. It's okay to do short sessions of uh, putting them on your hand as long as they're perching on your hand, taking photographs of them, and then putting them back in their cage. All done in a calm environment. That's okay. It's when people start playing with them and start playing with their chameleon and a dog in, in there that we start to get ridiculous. This is outside what a chameleon is comfortable with, and that is when you are starting to cause dangerous stress. So let's bring this to a very simple action item. If you're considering getting a chameleon, think about how important handling is to your pet relationship. If that is very important, then consider another reptile or another animal altogether that is much more suited for that. 
Uh, a chameleon just isn't the right animal for somebody who wants a tactile relationship with their pet. So I'm going to introduce you to two of my chameleons. Uh, this is Cyrano. So there's always exceptions to the rule, and uh, here's Cyrano, who decided he, as I was maintaining his uh, cage, he was just going to crawl on me, decided to crawl up my arm. So I just let him and uh, gave him a nice silkworm to eat while he's there. He ate it. And so I guess he's going to hang out until I can get him back in his cage. And I keep trying, and, well, he's not ready yet. So it's time for him to go back to his cage. This is not going smoothly. Cyrano, go home. And now for a more typical chameleon, here's Clancy. And so here we see two different chameleons that have two different responses to handling. Uh, although I'll say, I really didn't try to handle Cyrano. He came out on his own. And then later on, he wouldn't come out. And that's okay. It's totally up to him. That's the healthy relationship. With Clancy, I, he didn't want to be held at all. And that's okay. I love him the way he is. And I, I love watching him. And so... If he changes in the future and decides he wants to come out, then okay, we'll let him do that. If he spends his entire life wanting to be in his cage, that's fine too. The secret to having a successful, fulfilling chameleon relationship is you have to be okay with whatever they are, whenever they are like that. The next most often asked question is, will a chameleon bite? The answer is only if it has to. Uh, chameleons will bite only if they're scared for their lives. And uh, believe me, it's no secret when they're about to bite. They give unmistakable warning signs. They puff up. They gape. They show their teeth. They make fake lunges to let you know they're serious. And only after all that does not work do they actually bite. So yes, they do bite. And yes, larger chameleons can break the skin. But no, chameleons will not come after you. The people that get bit most often are the ones that ignore all of the warnings and insist on picking up the chameleon anyways. Question three is a big one. What equipment do I need for my chameleon? The main components of our chameleon setup includes a cage, lighting, and watering. Lighting consists of three parts, daylight for sight, a basking bulb for warming up, and a UVB bulb for ultraviolet wavelengths that allow the chameleon to create vitamin D3. A full watering system consists of a mister, a fogger, and a dripper. And then there are the plants for the inside. You don't have to memorize all this right now. There are links in the description that take you to build guides that lead you step by step. But this gives you an idea of what you're looking at to take care of a chameleon. The fact is, this does cost a little bit of money up front, to get everything set up. We are trying to create an arboreal environment within your living room and there are some challenges inherent with that. What you save by cutting corners up front, you will pay later in vet bills and a shortened life of your chameleon. Setting up a chameleon the first time can be costly, but if you do it right the first time, keeping a chameleon healthy long term really isn't that hard. The next is, what do they eat? Well, they eat bugs, live insects. And so you want to make sure you're okay with live insects before you even start going down this path. And it's not only just keeping them, you have to feed them. You have to make sure that they're healthy and nutritious so they're healthy and nutritious for your chameleon. Uh, in fact, many chameleon keepers become bug breeders or bug keepers just to make sure that their chameleons are getting great nutrition. So that gives you an idea where this sometimes leads. And finally, the question, will my chameleon just die on me? Well, historically, chameleons have been considered fragile and short-lived pets, and this just is not true. Uh, chameleons have been living 7, 10, 15, or more years, depending upon the species. They're very hardy animals. I mean, they're designed to live in nature, where nature is trying to eat them at every turn. So 
they are tough animals, but you got to take care of them correctly. And, and this is to be expected. And how would we do if we were kept as pets by polar bears in ice caves? We wouldn't do well either. So the secret is just set them up properly to begin with, and you'll have a long life with your chameleon. And of course, that is what this channel is all about. So say we want to take the next step. Where do we go from here? Well, I'm going to give you some do's and some don'ts. First, the do's. Do extensive research. But research is admittedly not easy. Every social media individual and group will have their own care standards, which will be different and sometimes contradictory. It is a wild digital world out there, and it can be very confusing. I have some information that you can trust, linked below in the description, and that's a good place to start. My one golden piece of advice to you is to figure out what information source you trust and stick with that one. Don't ask five different information sources because then you're just going to be confused. Pick the one that you trust and stick with that one until you have your feet under you and you understand the lay of the land. Next, do work with a breeder and get a captive hatched or captive born baby. Wild-caught chameleons are cheaper and look much more impressive, but there are a host of problems that come with them, including sickness and parasites and acclimation issues. Leave those to the breeders who are experienced to deal with those issues. Believe me, the cheap price on wild-caughts are deceiving, considering how much you end up spending on the back end continuing the acclimation process. There's absolutely no comparison to the enriching experience of getting a well-started baby chameleon from a breeder and having it grow up with you. Next, if at all possible, do set up your chameleon cage before you bring your chameleon home. Putting everything together the first time can be complicated. It is worth it to be patient enough to learn what you need to know and gather the equipment without having the pressure of a chameleon waiting for its home. Your next do is do do your research and find a good exotics vet with chameleon experience. No one ever thinks about a vet until they need one, and then it is difficult to find the right one. Because, inevitably, your emergency is going to happen Sunday morning. A chameleon vet is a tricky one to find. Relatively few vets have exotic animal experience. And not all of those have reptile experience. And fewer still have chameleon experience. So this isn't as simple as just calling up the nearest veterinarian. It is worth it to spend a little time looking for a qualified veterinarian right now when you aren't under pressure of having a chameleon that needs medical attention. And once you find one, it wouldn't hurt to bring your chameleon in for a baseline medical exam just to get to know the vet under calm circumstances. And now a few don'ts. Don't cut corners. Saving money is great, but not if you sacrifice quality. Bragging rights go to the person with the healthiest chameleon, not the person that spent the least amount of money. Next, don't get a chameleon cage kit. It sounds like a great idea, everything in one box, and it is a great idea. It's just, as of the recording of this video, there are none of them out there that are adequate for a chameleon. In fact, they're so bad as to be life-threatening. By far, the most common kit out there that you should absolutely avoid is the ZoomEd Chameleon Kit. These kits look enticing. Both the packaging and the pet store employee make it sound like they will do the job. They don't. They are meant to get you out of the door with your purchase. And the life of your chameleon depends on you joining a community at some point that can get you an effective setup. In the comment section, I do have some links. One is for the person watching this saying, oh no, I already have the chameleon kit, what do I do? It's gonna take you to a guide that's going to help you transition to a permanent cage. And for the person starting off fresh, there's a guide there that's going to tell you all the equipment to get so you can start off right to begin with. The next don't is don't get a chameleon for your child. You can get a chameleon to have a fun project to do with your child, but you need to be the primary caregiver. You need to take full responsibility for the life of this chameleon. 
don't use a chameleon or any living being for that matter as a test of responsibility of your child. Having a chameleon can be an incredibly rewarding experience for the parent and the child. Just make sure you take full responsibility for the well-being of the chameleon. And the last big don't that we're going to go over in this episode, don't keep chameleons together in the same cage. The constant bane of the chameleon community is the intense desire for humans to keep chameleons together. We assume, like us, they want friends or a mate. This is not the case. They are completely different creatures, and having a second or third chameleon in a cage will be stressful. You will be told a certain species can be kept together. You'll be told females can be kept together. You'll be told that this is a bonded pair. Please, just embrace the mantra, one chameleon per cage. No exceptions. Well, we're coming to the end of this basic overview of what a chameleon is like as a pet. Um, what do you think? Does what I say ring true? Does it sound like a path you'd like to follow? Um, I know it can be overwhelming and it can seem very complicated, but I've created an enormous amount of resources to help guide you step by step. I want to thank you so much for joining me here. If after taking all this in, you decide that, well, maybe you want to explore a little bit more as to whether a chameleon would be right for you, then stick around. The next video is going to be coming out soon and we can take that next step together. I'll see you then.